Fuses. There is more to them than you might think. Fuses typically used in an RV include automotive blade type fuses such as ATM, ATO, ATC, and Maxi types. The ATM and Maxi fuses are typically found in equipment while the ATO and the ATC fuses are found in both equipment and distribution panels. Glass cartridge fuses such as the AG style can also be found in RVs. AG originally meant all glass but AG is now used for most cartridge type fuses. Due to their 32 volts DC to 250 volt AC rating, they can be found anywhere from an accessory outlet plug to 120 volt AC appliances such as refrigerators and other items. For example, here is a accessory outlet plug and if you unscrew the cap here, you'll find a AGC fuse. There are several different sizes of glass fuses, as well as fast and slow blow varieties. If you have a roof mounted solar panel array, you may also have solar fuses such as this one here, which have a 1000 volt DC rating since arrays can have high DC voltages. And you will typically find those fuses in a cartridge such as this with MC4 solar connectors on it. And when you unscrew it, you'll find a solar fuse. And perhaps one of the biggest distinctions between the blade type fuses and the cartridge fuses is the DC voltage rating. And that is important as I'll explain later. The primary purpose of a fuse in a distribution panel is to protect the wiring. Most equipment will have their own protection, but for those devices that do not, the fuse in the distribution panel does provide some degree of protection as well. This is actually the distribution board from a WFCO distribution panel. And there are spots for 11 circuits across here. These first four I have fuses in. And also there are fuses to the battery. The most common fuse is either the ATO or ATC. And in an RV, they are essentially interchangeable as they are both manufactured to the same SAE requirement. ATO is a patented trademark of little fuse while ATC is the patented trademark of Busman Cooper Eaton. Time for a sports quiz. If you search the internet, you will find many references that ATO means open, while ATC means closed, but this is really not the case, as there are ATC fuses with both open and closed bottoms. So this is not necessarily true. According to Little Fuse, the O in ATO does not stand for open, just as the C in ATC from our major competitor does not stand for closed. ATO is not an acronym, but rather we could not trademark the word auto for use in the word auto fuse. Our patented design does happen to have an open cavity on the bottom. Our major competitor's products have a mixture of open or closed cavities depending on who is manufacturing our fuses. The major competitor, of course, would be Busman, and they indeed manufacture both open and closed bottom fuses. So it does appear that the ATO ATC designation is merely trademarks and not open and closed bottoms. And I did reach out to Busman for an explanation of their ATC trademark, but they never responded. And what we are referring to here is the bottom of the fuse. And you can see at the bottom here of this fuse, it is open. And you can see that the bottom of this fuse is sealed. And if we look at a little fuse, you can see where it says ATO registered trademark. This does happen to be an open bottom fuse. This Busman fuse says ATC. This happens to be a closed fuse and the body is made out of polycarbonate. However, this Busman ATC fuse is made from nylon and has an open bottom. So here we go. We have a Busman ATC fuse with an open bottom and one with a closed bottom. So clearly, ATC does not mean closed and ATO does not mean open. They're just manufacturer trademarks. So I'm not sure where the open and closed explanation originated, but it does appear to be a myth. If it's on the internet, it must be true, right? At any rate, whether the fuse is open or closed on the bottom can be significant from an ignition protection perspective. Closed bottom fuses are often manufactured to meet SAE J1171, which is an ignition protection specification. 
Indeed, many of the Buffsman polycarbonate fuses do meet ignition protection requirements. However, I have not found any Little Fuse brand blade fuses that have ignition protection or closed bottoms for that matter. Little Fuse may very well make ignition protected fuses, but I just could not locate a source of them. An ignition protected fuse prevents a fuse from igniting fuel vapors. In a boat, explosive fuel vapors are heavier than air and can accumulate in the bilge area of the engine compartment as there is no direct ventilation from the bottom of the boat. A spark from a non-ignition protection device can cause an explosion. So I would highly recommend using a closed bottom fuse if you had an ignition protection concern such as in the bilge area of a boat. In my view, an ignition rated fuse such as a closed bottom fuse can replace an open bottom fuse, but not the other way around. Fortunately, RVs don't usually have this issue, but there is a conceivable situation where fuel vapors could accumulate inside the RV itself if you had a leak, say, at the stove or any of the other appliances such as a water heater. If those had a gas leak inside, then you could have a buildup of vapors. A fuse is simply a fusible link that melts and separates when the current flow exceeds a specified amount. When a fuse is operated within its rating, it simply acts as a path for the current to flow through it. The fuse rating is not the current at which it will fail, it is the current at which it will operate. Therefore, a 20 amp fuse will pass current at 20 amps without damage and will fail at some point above 20 amps. Electron flow is an electromechanical process and if the current is excessive, the fuse link will begin to heat up from the excess friction of electrons flowing through it. If the overcurrent continues to flow through the fuse, the link will eventually begin to melt. At some point during the melting process, the fuse will begin to separate. As the fuse link separates, a spark will bridge the gap in the link. This is a plasma spark and current is still flowing at this point through the fuse. Eventually, the gap will become large enough that the spark will extinguish and the current flow ceases. The primary reason fuses have a voltage rating is the ability of the plasma spark to jump the gap in the fuse is determined by the voltage applied across the fuse. A higher voltage will allow the spark to jump a greater distance. If the voltage on the fuse exceeds its rating, the fuse will not cease to conduct electricity even when the fuse is fully open. In that situation, current flow will only cease when the next weakest link in the circuit is damaged. For this reason, it is very important that you never exceed the voltage rating of the fuse, because otherwise the fuse may not adequately protect the circuit. Also, realize that there is typically a different voltage rating for DC volts and AC volts in a fuse. A fuse is not an instantaneous protection device as it requires a finite amount of time for the fuse to heat up and separate. The time required for this to occur depends on how much overcurrent is passing through the fuse. Fuses typically have a TC or time current chart as shown here. This chart plots the fuse's behavior depending on the intensity of the overcurrent. This chart is fairly typical for a standard automotive type ATM, ATO, and ATC fuse. Notice that the fuse with a 20 amp rating will never blow at currents below 25 amps. Thus, the fuse rating is the current at which the fuse will operate, not at which the fuse will blow. Notice also that the performance curve is fairly constant at currents around 25 amps for up to 10 seconds. And as the overcurrent increases, the time to blow becomes less. For example, at the left side of the chart, a 20 amp fuse can withstand almost 300 amps for up to 10 milliseconds before blowing. The next time you contemplate increasing the fuse size because the fuse is blowing, remember this chart. Some devices in an RV use these maxi fuses. This one actually comes from the Lippert Ground Control 3.0 control board and it's rated for 35 amps, which is kind of an oddball size. You can buy a 35 amp ATC ATO fuse, so why would you ever want to use such a big fuse if a small one would work? Well, the fact is, this is a special purpose fuse and it does have a characteristic called slow blow. As the name suggests, a slow blow fuse is a delayed action fuse and is mostly useful for circuits having a motor. 
When a motor starts, it typically requires up to five times the normal current to get going. If you size the fuse to accommodate for motor starts, it may not adequately protect the circuit in normal operation. When we compare the TC chart for a slow blow fuse with a standard fuse, we see that the performance curve in the 10 second and greater range is fairly close. But in the area between 100 milliseconds and 10 seconds, the slow blow fuse allows more amperage. For example, a motor start event typically takes about a half a second. A standard 20 amp fuse would allow about 30 amps to pass in one half second, while a slow blow fuse will allow about 100 amps to pass. In other words, a slow blow 20 amp fuse will allow five times the normal current to pass for one half second. This is usually sufficient to allow motor starts. And the automotive ATO ATC type fuses generally have a color code that designates what their current carrying capability is. And it is true probably 99% of the time, but not always. For example, here is a 35 amp ATO ATC fuse and it is violet. But then we have a little fuse, maxi fuse, that is also 35 amps. And they actually call this brown. And here is a busman. 35 amp fuse identical to this one, although this one is green. So while the ATO ATC fuses generally follow the color code, other fuses may not. My recommendation is always look at the stamping on the fuse to make sure you're replacing it with the right fuse. You can also obtain these glow fuses, and these are from Little Fuse, ATO fuses, and Busman make something similar. And these fuses have an LED. And when the circuit opens, the LED will light up and that will let you know that the fuse is blown. However, realize if you have a WFCO panel like this, they have an indicator circuit along the top here that will light up just like this one will. So you may already have that type of indicator in your RV and not know it. And while this is a discussion about fuses, I would not be complete if I did not mention these. These are an ATO ATC style circuit breaker and they will fit in the same location that a fuse will. These circuit breakers are thermally operated. They contain a bimetallic strip not unlike an automotive turn signal blinker your grandfather had in his vehicle. As the bimetallic strip heats up, the contacts separate shutting down the circuit. Circuit breakers are one of three types. Type 1 is an auto reset breaker. After a certain amount of time, the breaker will automatically reset. Type 2, once blown, will stay off and requires manually resetting it by power cycling the circuit. And Type 3, also once blown, can only be reset by a mechanical lever. Superimposing the circuit breaker's TC chart, we can see that it is a slow blow device, somewhat mimicking a maxi fuse. Notice that its curve ends at around 200 milliseconds. That is the limit of its ability to interrupt a circuit due to the time required to heat the biometallic strip and offers virtually no protection for overloads occurring less than 100 milliseconds. For these reasons, these breakers should only be used in a motor control circuit as they are not fast enough for general purpose use. And my parting thoughts are that I recommend you categorize all the fuses you have in the RV Go out and buy spares for them so that you can have them when the time comes. Some fuses, such as the 35 amp maxi fuse and the 2 amp mini fuses that are used in some water heaters, are virtually impossible to find unless you can find an RV store. You're not going to find them at your typical hardware store, so to save yourself some grief, just carry those as spares.